Good. Um, so we have some time for some uh, questions, some comments, some discussion. I hope that folks might um, Here, and I'm going to ask you to, this is for the recording, to just use this. <coughs> Horace um, Branham. To speak up. Horace yeah. Branham. Have you noticed, everyone, that Roger always has a pencil in hand in seminar? <laughs> true. And right now, there is a pencil. <laughs> a pencil is what an editor uses, not a pen. He can change with the pencil. He can cut. He can erase in a practice of editing. And the whole issue of editing has not come up in this brilliant uh, session until this point. And I want to bear witness that Roger is a remarkable, stupendous editor. Uh, very, very moving to have been edited by him. He is generous, never condescending, never, I know more than you, author, uh, editor. And he worked over word after word of one of my texts for the history of private life, making it better at every step, working, <laughs> making me feel brighter as he worked along. And I wanted just to thank you, Roger. And he gave the title to the chapter, the Refuge de team. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. No pressure. <laughs> yes, yes. It's for the rec it's for the recording. That's why. Um, yeah, uh, I, I just have a, I'm not a, a, a cultural historian or a literary historian or anything. In fact, I did my dissertation with David Bien in the early 1990s on military history. And I, I always thought that you had a, a great career manqué as a military historian. Um, <laughs> and I wondered, but I wondered, uh, you know, I've read your article uh, about the uh, Ecole de Mezières many, many, many times, and why did it, it, it just sticks out like a sore thumb in your entire body of, uh, of work. Why did you write that? <laughs> I've always wondered. I am sorry to have read that, to have done it now, but uh, yeah. But it was uh, in connection with what Bob said. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. But no, there was a general framework because uh, you know that the time uh, we were also working with Dominique Julia, Marie -La Madeleine Comper on the history of education in France and working in the, uh, yeah, with uh, the, the perspective of the sociology of the uh, uh, recruitment in order to show, for example, that the people who enter in the Jesuit college was uh, perhaps with a broader uh, social origin, uh, uh, more, more diverse social origin that it was already uh, often sought. So within this context of the uh, history of education, which was focused mainly on the uh, primary and secondary education, we thought also about this uh, institution created by the monarchy and particularly the uh, Ecole Militaire in the 1751 and after the Ecole du Génie de Mézières and the Ecole d'Artillerie uh, where the young uh, Bonaparte uh, was a uh, student. So it was a contact. I was also in the military and to justify the fact I was not fighting against uh, an an invisible enemy. I was, uh, uh, I, I was not only the librarian described by Bob, but also I decided to work on this uh, Ecole du Génie de uh, Mézières because the library in Versailles was within the Ecole du Génie uh, now. And it was a, 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 the reason why I think the general who was the director of this Ecole because I have time to go to the archive, particularly in Vincennes, where the uh, archive were uh, kept. So, as ever, it was contingency and something which was uh, in a framework because we have Dominique and uh, late Marie-Madeleine Comper, we have uh, published in 1976. I, I, I hate all these days because sometimes I have the tendency to think it was 1876. <laughs> 
fortune, c'est 20 ans. Non, we published uh, yeah, this uh, book on the education in France uh, between 16 and 18th century. And uh, Dominique uh, follows this path with extraordinary contribution to the sociology of education. After, with, uh, I shift more in the, into the, the direction described of the uh, uh, history of the book or the written, uh, the written culture. But I hope you are not be too uh, 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 in despair reading this, uh, <laughs> this work. Bonjour, Roger. Um, as I've been listening to uh, the talks, I've been uh, thinking, uh, do you see yourself as having started with the history of the book, but given us a framework that uh, will allow us to adapt to the new media landscape that we're now living in, and uh, how do you think your work might fit into that? Bob has written a lot of things, and with another experience and myself about this. Uh, what I think, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, and it was also a point made by, by, by Colleen, uh, yeah, is uh, this is historical uh, knowledge of the uh, long durée of the written culture, a possible or necessary or useful instrument for trying to decipher where are the main ruptures, the discontinuity, or sometimes uh, the, the behind the discontinuity uh, um, forms of uh, continuity. And also, we, we can try, but everyone has this kind of exercise without a particular uh, expertise on the, digital, uh, on the digital world. I think there are two elements. The first element would be, uh, for me, what is the, the, the radical discontinuity is the fact that uh, in the digital world there is a separation between uh, one, the text and the materiality. Of course, it's a materiality which gives access to text, but in a role for a Greek or Roman reader of the uh, uh, second century before Christ, or for the reader of a manuscript codex, or for the reader of a printed text, the, uh, there is an indissociable uh, relation between the object he has in his hand or her hand and the text which is in this object. In the uh, digital culture, which is not immaterial, there is nothing more material than all these devices we use. And when you have to buy it, you realize that they are <laughs> material. Uh, this uh, linkage is uh, suppressed because the object could be the vehicle of any form of text if it exists in the uh, digital form. And this has profound consequences, it seems to me. For example, for the relationship between the fragment and the totality, no one is obliged to uh, uh, read uh, all the pages of, uh, of a book, except if they are, was written by one of the three colleagues here. <laughs> but for the other, uh, but nevertheless, the materiality of the inscription impose a perception, even unconscious, of the totality. And also, the uh, extraction of any specific passage refer to the place, to the location in which this fragment is within the totality, because it's uh, some a fragment which has uh, play a role in a demonstration, an argumentation, or a fiction, a narrative. Mm. This uh, relation, I don't want to say it's absolutely impossible in the uh, digital form, but it's transformed, profoundly transformed. And when the, ex the idea that perhaps once the fragment will be no more a fragment, but a kind of uh, textual entity in itself, which is liberated or disconnected from any form of relation or with other uh, elements in the uh, uh, written culture. I don't think it would, it's a diagnosis uh, a little uh, 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 absurd, but it seems to me that something has changed for this. And the second element, which was the element of uh, uh, by Colin, is the tension between the category I try to describe in one of the paragraphs, that is to say, uh, singularity of the writing, originality of the aesthetics, and uh, 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 intellectual property, which are constantly challenged by the possibilities of the technology. And the tension is for the publisher, perhaps for some of the author, to keep something 
of the traditional category in a new form of inscription, which could easily borrow them, erase them with the collective uh, uh, process of uh, writing and rewriting, with the fact that uh, uh, the uh, uh, criteria of, uh, which was linking singularity, originality, could be also uh, erased, and the permanent conflict about the literary property or the intellectual property. So it seems to me, you're just a sketchy answer, but uh, uh, it seems to me that we, we can mobilize, but uh, uh, many people have tried to do this, we can mobilize this historical knowledge within the framework of discussion which are quite exclusively uh, technical or uh, uh, legal, uh, but something could be learned from this a radical differentiation, which is blurred by the fact that we are still in the tree culture. My pencil, uh, many, many uh, printed books, journals, reviews, uh, 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 diaries, and, uh, 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 periodical, and the digital culture. But it's not a reason for uh, underestimate, it seems to me, the uh, uh, effect produced by this dissociation between the text and the uh, materiality in which it is uh, inscribed. Um, I wonder, sort of a follow up to that, if you could reflect a little bit on how you found the, the specificity of the cultural representations in reading and books as opposed to other forms of cultural representation like music and art. I know. Lynn Hunt has written about, but what did you see in reading in the book in particular that is not pertinent or is, is different from those other forms of cultural presentation? Fundamental question we discussed yesterday with Bob, which was uh, about the, uh, the legitimacy of the extension of a category as reading to uh, different uh, symbolic production. And you say we are, we are the, I want to say perhaps everyone has this polarization of this uh, tension uh, between on the one hand to consider that it's not illegitimate to think that uh, uh, culture is an assemblage of text, as Segers, or that we can read an image, a city, uh, 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 a text, and on the other hand to be, uh, uh, to, to, to be conscious that the procedure for the uh, deciphering are not identical. And uh, uh, the sequentiality, linearity, uh, successivity, which is uh, given by the uh, text, is not the same for the uh, deciphering of uh, 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 painting, or still less for uh, the uh, interpretation of a landscape or of uh, 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 urban uh, space. And this is an important tension, uh, uh, and some authors or some are more inclined to insist about the uh, uh, homogeneity or to use a category which is encompassing these different practices of decipherment, and others uh, uh, are more inclined to insist upon the reducibility of one manner of uh, 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 reading with other, which could be reading only metaphorically in relation with reading directly connected with the reading of a, of a text. And I think it's uh, 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 a tension that uh, can be present. It's the reason why I make this opposition between Bourdieu and, uh, and Goethe, and think perhaps we could try to, uh, in my Victor Cousin eclecticism, to assemble one with the other. But also, uh, 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 Don Mackenzie, for example, there is no one more uh, interested than Mackenzie to decipher the specific procedure of uh, the uh, uh, reading of the written word. And at the same time, at the beginning of the sociology, uh, uh, bibliography and sociology of text, he states that you can consider as a text and consequently as an object made for, to be read, uh, not only uh, 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 iconographic uh, uh, production, but even the landscape, when the landscape is organized as a symbolic system by the population occupying this landscape. And so you have always this tension. And for me, it's always uh, 
more, more, a problematic perspective and to try to uh, understand the status of the use of text and reading when it's not a discourse which has to be uh, read because it has a uh, uh, written inscription and the reading which is the uh, practice connected with this. It was also uh, the, the tension it's paradoxical because Mackenzie could, could look at the second, uh, more linked with the idea of a specificity of reading and text where he has, at the beginning, he makes his postulate that uh, there is the kind of uh, system of symbolic uh, uh, expression which is a text, <coughs> whatever it may be, included, as I said, an organized and symbolically uh, uh, charged uh, landscape. And an author like uh, Rest uh, Ranum and myself will like very much, that is to say Louis Marin, which could be more a defender of this uh, generalization of the category of text in some of these books, for example, L'Opacité de la Peinture, or the, one of the last books, insisted upon the irreducibility of the two logic, the logic which produced discourse and the logic which produced painting and consequently, the modes of decipherment of the one and the other. Alors, technically, it could refer to uh, the uh, linearity versus, uh, 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 which implied and imposed a logic of the decipherment versus an opening and the possibility to enter into the symbolic system in a manner or another. It could be one of the objects you can uh, uh, discuss. It could be also uh, the discussion about uh, what are the, 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 recourse, the resource for uh, this uh, symbolic uh, uh, production and what is specific when you use a form of writing, whatever it may be, alphabetic or uh, ideographic uh, or uh, hieroglyphic and, and so on. So I think it's a very important question. There is no solution. It's another problem I have not solved in four years. No, I should start, uh, I, I continue to work. So perhaps we hope she is not absolutely uh, must not necessarily be abandoned. Wonderful. Um, our reception is actually going to be beginning. And so um, I know that Roger has had, this is his third panel of the day. And so I think it is most appropriate that we continue the conversation um, enjoying um, the, the wine and the food that is um, for the reception that's being co-sponsored by um, Duke University Press and um, the University of South Carolina. Um, so please, I, I hope that you will, um, will join us in the foyer and, and have, a, have a drink. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>